Jack Legs Diamond, also known as Gentleman Jack, was an Irish-American gangster in Philadelphia and New York City during the Prohibition era. He was known for his flashy lifestyle and flamboyant personality, but he also had a long criminal record. Diamond survived a number of attempts on his life between 1916 and 1931, dubbing him the Clay Pigeon of the Underworld. However, on December 18, 1931, just after a visit to his mistress and passing out on his bed, gunman entered his room and shot him three times in the back of the head. Jack Legs Diamond was born Jack Moran on July 10, 1897, to Sarah and John Moran, who immigrated from Ireland to Philadelphia, USA, in 1891. Jack and his younger brother, Eddie, struggled through elementary school, while his mother, Sarah, was afflicted with severe arthritis and other health issues. Sarah died on December 24, 1913, as a result of complications caused by a bacterial infection and a high fever, and his father, John Moran, moved to Brooklyn shortly after. Diamond soon joined the Hudson Dusters, a New York Street gang, and was arrested for the first time for burglary on February 4, 1914, when he broke into a jewelry store. Diamond served in the United States Army during World War I, but deserted in 1918 or 1919, and was convicted and imprisoned for his actions. Diamond served two years of a three- to five-year sentence at Leavenworth Military Prison, and after his release in 1921, he became a thug and later Arnold Rothstein's personal bodyguard. Diamond was well known for his flamboyant lifestyle. His nickname Legs came from either his ability to dance or how quickly he could flee his enemies. Alice, his wife, was never supportive of his lifestyle but did little to discourage him from it. Diamond was a womanizer, with showgirl and dancer Marion Kiki Roberts being his most well-known mistress. Prohibition was in effect in the late 1920s, making the sale of beer and other alcoholic beverages illegal in the United States. Diamond attempted but failed to obtain beer and narcotics in Europe. He was, however, able to obtain liquor, which was dumped overboard in partially full barrels that floated onto Long Island as ships approached New York and paid children a nickel for every barrel they brought to his trucks. During Prohibition, Jacob Origin was a New York gangster involved in bootlegging and labor racketeering. Origin had already established a powerful organization that included gunmen like Louis Lepka Buckelter, Jacob Shapiro, and Diamond. By 1925, Origin and Legs Diamond had begun to venture into bootlegging, supplying Broadway nightclubs and speakeasies. He also maintained his original primary occupation of labor slugging. City officials in New York quickly began investigating union racketeering, which threatened to expose other criminal operations. Rothstein advised Origin in 1927 through intermediary Louis Buckelter, although some sources claim Meyer Lansky, to focus on infiltrating labor unions instead of traditional labor slugging and strong-arm tactics. On October 16, 1927, while walking on Norfolk Street in a Manhattan neighborhood on the Lower East Side, Origin was killed by Buckelter and Shapiro in a drive-by shooting. Diamond went to work overseeing bootleg alcohol sales in downtown Manhattan after Origin died. This put him at odds with Dutch Schultz, who wanted to expand beyond his Harlem base. He also had run-ins with other gangs in the city. Diamond and fellow gang member Charles Entrada shot three drunken brawlers in the New York Broadway Hotsy Totsy Club, partly owned by Diamond, on July 14, 1929. The bartender, three waiters, and the hat check girl all vanished from the club. One of them was found shot dead in New Jersey. Diamond was not charged, but the club was forced to close. In 1930, Diamond and two henchmen kidnapped a truck driver named Grover Parks in Cairo, New York, and demanded to know where he got his load of hard cider. When Parks denied carrying anything, Diamond and his men tortured and beat him before releasing him. Diamond was charged with kidnapping James Duncan a few months later. 
His first trial was held in Catskill, New York, but he was acquitted. However, he was convicted on related charges in a federal case and sentenced to four years in prison. Diamond boarded the ocean liner Belgianland in New York on August 23, 1930, under the alias John Nolan, bound for Europe. The NYPD suspected he left the country aboard the RMS Olympic or RMS Baltic, but he was not found on either ship when they arrived in Europe. The NYPD then sent a wireless telegraph message to Belgianland, who responded by saying that a man matching Diamond's description was among her passengers. Diamond spent the majority of the voyage playing poker in the ship's smoking room. The NYPD notified police in Plymouth, England, Cherbourg, France, and Antwerp, Belgium, that he was an unsavory character. When the Belgian land arrived in Plymouth on August 31st, officers from Scotland Yard informed Diamond that he would not be allowed to disembark in England. He told reporters that he wanted to visit Vichy, a French spa town known for its mineral waters, traditionally referred to as taking the cure. On September 1st, Diamond disembarked in Antwerp, where Belgian police took him to their Antwerp headquarters. At the end of the day, Diamond agreed to leave the country voluntarily and was placed on a train to Germany. German police detained him when his train arrived at Aachenhaupt Bahnhof and was deported by the German government on September 6th. He was driven to Hamburg and loaded onto the cargo ship Hanover bound for Philadelphia. On September 23rd, the Hanover arrived in Philadelphia and Diamond was immediately apprehended by officers from the Philadelphia Police Department. At a court hearing that day, the judge stated that Diamond would be released if he left Philadelphia within an hour. Diamond concurred. During the 1927 murder of Origin, Diamond stood in for his brother Eddie as Origin's bodyguard. Diamond was shot twice below the heart during that shooting and was taken to Bellevue Hospital, where he eventually recovered. Diamond was interviewed in the hospital by police, but he refused to identify any suspects or assist the investigation in any way. Diamond was initially suspected of being an accomplice and was charged with homicide, but the charge was later dropped. The attackers were allegedly looking to break into Origins Garment District labor rackets. Diamond was shot and wounded on October 12, 1930, at the Hotel Monticello on Manhattan's west side. Diamond's room was broken into by two men who shot him five times before fleeing. Diamond collapsed in the hallway, still wearing his pajamas. When the New York Police Commissioner later asked how he got out of the room, Diamond said he drank two shots of whiskey first. Diamond was rushed to Manhattan's Polyclinic Hospital, where he eventually recovered and was discharged on December 30th, 1930. On April 21st, 1931, Diamond was arrested in Catskill, New York, on assault charges for the park's beating in 1930. Two days later, he was released from the county jail on $25,000 bond. Diamond was shot and wounded again on April 27, 1931, this time at the Aratoga Inn, a roadhouse near Cairo, New York. He walked out the front door after eating in the dining room with three other people. He was shot three times before collapsing near the door and was driven to a hospital in Albany, New York, by a local resident, where he eventually recovered. While he was still in the hospital, New York State troopers seized over $5,000 in illegal beer and alcohol from Diamond's hideouts in Cairo and the Aratoga Inn on May 1st. Diamond and Paul Quattroshi were charged with bootlegging in August 1931. Diamond was convicted and sentenced to four years in state prison the same month, but appealed his conviction in September 1931. Diamond's enemies finally caught up with him on December 18, 1931. Diamond had been staying in an Albany, New York rooming house while on trial for kidnapping charges. However, he was acquitted on December 17. He and his family and friends were at a restaurant that night. He then went to see his mistress, Marion Kiki Roberts, at 1 a.m. Diamond returned to the rooming house at 4.30 a.m. and passed out on his bed. An hour later, two gunmen entered his room, where he was then restrained by one man while the other shot him three times in the back of the head. 
Dutch Schultz, local thugs, the Albany Police Department, and relatives of Red Cassidy, another Irish-American gangster at the time, have all been mentioned as possible suspects in the murder. According to William Kennedy's O. Albany, Democratic Party Chairman Dan O'Connell, who ran the local political machine, ordered Diamond's execution, which the Albany police carried out. Given the O'Connell machine's power in Albany and its determination to prevent other organized crime from establishing itself in the city and threatening their monopoly of vice, some accept this version of the story. According to those who believe this theory, William Fitzpatrick's promotion to chief of police was a reward for executing Diamond. Chief Fitzpatrick was shot and killed in his own office in 1945 by John McElvany, an Albany police detective. Jack Diamond was laid to rest on December 23, 1931, at Mount Olivet Cemetery in Maspeth, Queens. There was no church service or memorial service. Diamond's interment drew 200 family members and spectators, but no criminal figures were seen. Diamond's widow, Alice Kenny Diamond, was found shot to death in her Brooklyn apartment on July 1, 1933, at the age of 33. It is alleged that Diamond's enemies shot her in order to keep her quiet, 